What's up YouTube? Today we are continuing our dive into the world of video game sound and music. So in this episode I want to discuss creating interactive music. So that's music that changes depending on player input, whether that's a kind of perceived threat level, the amount of enemies being spawned, like in uh, the example of my game, or you know any sort of you know change in the environment could spark a change in the music. I think this is a particularly interesting sort of way of creating music because you essentially trying to create something which can work in various different examples. Uh, each element needs to kind of work on its own, but also while it's being combined with other elements, creating different types of tension and that kind of thing. And I want to discuss, you know, how I, uh, my thoughts behind actually, you know, sound designing and writing the actual musical elements. But I also want to show you guys how to actually incorporate this kind of thing into something like Unity um, using a program called WYSE or WISE. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is WYSE. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So my initial thoughts were I wanted it to feel like the tension or intensity of the music was kind of increasing as the player jumps higher in the level and as more enemies start to sort of spawn. That being said is I kind of wanted to create some placeholders which I could kind of load into the game and then you know do a couple of play tests as I develop the sound to kind of fit the theme of the game a little bit closer. So keep that in mind. I mean, there still might be a few sounds here. Uh, for example, there's a kind of like female choir type of sound here, which I, I like the sound of, but I feel like it doesn't quite fit the theme of the game. But that being said is for now, we're gonna work with it. We're gonna look at loading uh, different kind of elements within uh, into Wise, creating what's called an RTPC. Then what we can do is we can go through a couple of play tests and start to develop more of a theme in each of these kind of layers or each of of these sounds. I loaded quite a few sounds from the UVI orchestral suite. I started with these two Tycho layers. Um, these were like the first things that I started processing or that I started kind of writing around. I did end up kind of spanning them out because I felt like they added a lot of this intensity in the track. So, you know, those only start to come in a little bit later on as the player kind of progresses in the level. So as you can see, there's kind of two parts there, one that kind of lays down a main rhythm and then one that just adds a kind of level of intensity on top of that. So some of the other elements that I sort of started creating right up front was a this kind of siren sound, which is a very, very simple patch in Vital. It's literally just a saw wave with some uh, portamento glide, and I've set this to always glide. So um, no matter what happens, you don't have to actually overlap the notes. They're always going to glide from one note to another. And that creates this nice kind of siren sound, and this adds to like that extra level of intensity on top. I'm still going to work on like processing and some more sort of like advanced sound design stuff. But like I said, I'm just developing this kind of like these sort of placeholders, which I can render out in chunks, show you guys, you know, how WYS works. And then we can look at developing the theme a little bit further. So, you know, around this kind of like idea of these sliding notes, I believe I transposed this down uh, minus two. So it's actually playing in B flat minor. So it's well, essentially at the moment, it's just doing some sliding B flat notes. And I wanted to add some more kind of musical elements to it. So I started incorporating this kind of choir, um, a little bit of an arpeggiator. Like I said, this choir was uh, preset in the UVI orchestral suite. And the little arpeggiator here was something very simple. I created in Vital just a sine wave with some pluck and some distortion and other processing on the effects over here. Uh, 
Uh, and then I added like a, almost like a base layer using DCO 106. I think this was just the uh, sort of initialized preset as it starts up with a bit of modulation happening on the filter. So as I'm creating these sounds and as I'm developing this kind of idea, I'm thinking about how I'm going to arrange these in terms of the intensity. And that's how I've used this color scheme and kind of arranged it downwards to kind of, you know, to create this idea of, uh, for example, this is going to be intensity level one. And then as we kind of increase the intensity level two, the next layer kind of mixes in. And as we increase it to intensity level three, the next layer fades in and so on and so on and so on. And then here, right at the end, I've got some drums and some guitars to do a kind of like metal type of thing. But I want to show you something interesting, like within Wise, what you can do is... Let me just give you a quick example here. So I've got these guitars. Uh, this one I created uh, using a contact library called Shreddage 3 Strata Stratus Free. Um, the one limitation with that is you can use it for 15 minutes and then the plugin kind of forces you to buy the full version or you have to reload it. So what I did is I just like chopped out a bunch of chords and then arrange that to suit the thing that I was doing. So it's a little bit of a tricky workflow to work around these kind of free contact libraries, but hey, it, it kind of, it works for me. I didn't need that kind of like hyper realistic guitar sound. I just wanted something that kind of would add that intensity uh, to the kind of like final part. I guess it wouldn't be a boss fight, but it's just the part where it, it kind of, the level becomes almost unmanageable and the amount of en enemies that are being spawned just kill you anyway. So here, let's say for example, we're playing these, uh, like everything that's loaded into the track. So now we're at like max intensity level and things are going crazy in the game. <laughs> I feel like these kind of big taiko drums that were established right at the beginning, like uh, say for example this layer and then this green layer over here, um, these two, I feel like those are kind of like creating too much when these guitars and drums mix in. So within WISE you can actually set up parameters to turn down the volume of certain layers as in intensity rises and that kind of thing. So it's, it's actually incredibly advanced what you can do just within that software alone. So we don't have to do too much in terms of how we're arranging things. We just need to think about, you know, do these uh, layers that we're creating work together and do they work kind of on their own as well or do they work in different combinations to kind of do different things. So I guess that's the idea is to create this kind of uh, rack of sounds that you have and just kind of mute ones and play with them and see how does the intensity change when you mute certain parts. Like for example, let's take away the guitars and then we can add like maybe just the drums and like a pad from the beginning here and none of the other elements. Um, and that could be, for example, like the game over screen or something. Just an example. So anyway, now what I want to do is I um, now that I've kind of like thoughtfully, uh, I wonder what actually are these other sounds here. I think this is a preset from my Vital preset bank. Yeah, LD burnt matches. Um, and this I will get into in a different video. I'm kind of saving that. And yeah, just some more Falcon uh, UVI orchestral suite sounds. That's basically the idea behind a lot of this stuff is um, I just wanted to kind of lay down ideas and there's so much kind of like sonic potential within this pack, specifically for this kind of uh, cinematic type of thing, that it was very easy to kind of get what I had in mind out very quickly. And now I can kind of go and start to develop things a little bit further and that kind of thing. So anyway, um, now what I wanna do is I wanna start looking at splitting these into their kind of like uh, layers and rendering them out. Uh, you might be wondering what's happening here and here. These were just me playing around with, you know, um, I haven't got to this part in the game, but say for example, there's like a, a progression to like a level two. Um, I changed things to like a slightly different time signature that was a little bit faster using the exact same elements here. Um, and then again here. So I haven't got to this part yet 
for doing these kinds of things. I may look at that in a future episode. So anyway, now what I want to do is render these out into loops. So for example, I'll have, uh, let's call this number one, and then number two, number three, uh, these wouldn't be muted, uh, number four, number five, number five, number six, and then number seven. And then we'll load that up into Wise. I'll go into that in the next portion of this video. Okay, so this is W Wise, and I've already got a couple of things loaded up here in my actor mixer hierarchy. So this would be stuff like sound effects. And then here uh, in the interactive music hierarchy, this would be where you load your sort of chunks and stuff that you would be using to create the background music. So first thing we want to do is create a new child and we want to create a music segment. So what this is going to do is this is going to create a, almost like a DAW style workflow within WISE, which we can load our uh, samples into and start to kind of develop a loop. So let's call this music. And here what we want to do is right click and let's say import audio files. And then we want to browse to where the files are. So I've already got them in a folder over here and just click open import. So you'll see it's automatically imported them into a almost like DAW style window at the bottom here. And if we press play, we'll listen to our creation. However, there's a couple of things we need to set up uh, first and foremost so that we can create a sort of a loop so it carries on looping. It doesn't just play once. And then we also want to set up uh, what I said earlier, what's called an RTPC, which is basically a parameter that you can control within the game engine to do different things within our little DAW window over here. So let's click here and then let's say new parent and we want to create a music playlist container. So now what's happening is it's creating a little playlist and it's putting those uh, that segment, that music segment that we created inside the playlist, which we can then use to loop and stuff like that. So let's call this music playlist. And then here, what we want to do is we want to drop this down, drag this music segment into this bottom part here. And then we want to set both of these loop counts to infinite. Now, if we select the music playlist and we click this pin. Um, so, so basically, if you don't select the pin over here, when you click here and you start working and you press this play button, it doesn't loop. But when you press the play button on the music playlist window, it does loop. And while you're editing things, you'll be jumping between windows. So it's just helpful to uh, pin this to the menu so that when you're diving around, you can always hear it looping. So for each of these channels, we want to create an RTPC. So this uh, BGM7, this is like our guitars and our drums. We want this to only come in right at the end. Uh, let's just here, uh, just solo it to make sure that this is the correct channel. Uh, oh yeah, we also want to set this exit cue to the end of the sample. Okay, so let's select BGM7 and then here at the top we want to click on this RTPC button. And then here, let's select create. What we want to do is we want to create an RTPC for the voice volume. As you can see there, there's a couple of different parameters you can do. You can do filters and all sorts of stuff. We might get into that in future videos. Um, for now, let's just set a game parameter. Um, as you can see here, I've already created an RTPC, um, but let's just see, yeah. So what you do, what you would do is you would go new and then create a new one. Um, I've already created one. And then as you can see here, it pops up a little uh, linear graph at the bottom. And this linear graph represents the kind of parameter value compared to the volume of the channel. So let's see what happens if we press play and then sweep this. So you see, as you sweep that uh, RTPC value or, you know, within the game engine, as you change that number, the 
channel that we created this RTPC value for starts to fade in slowly. So remember, this is kind of infinitely expandable. You can create as many parameters as you want. You can change how these uh, parameters are kind of being remapped linearly. Um, so here, what we want to do is, you know, right at this kind of like end part, we want to slowly start bringing in these uh, guitars and drums. So let's just say, you know, at like 90, at a value of 90, we'll have like full drums and guitars. And then uh, let's look for these channels, which had the Tycho's and we'll slowly fade those out at a value of 90. So um, just to make things a bit easier, what we're going to do is jump into each of these channels and create an RTPC for the voice volume real quick. Cool. Now we can go in and start to edit at which values things mix in and mix out. So let's just check, is this the other Tycho's channel? So the first channel, we want to be enabled the whole time. We could maybe at some points like fade it out to, you know, get a, the mix nice with other layers. But, you know, once we've set it all up, we can go in and start to sweep this parameter and, you know, really listen for how it kind of like mixes together and transitions. Maybe we could have this kind of like first pad layer slowly start to fade out after just before halfway or so. Because I think it's like it starts to need more like energy and less of that kind of like airiness. Okay, so let's load that up and see how that fits. So what you're gonna wanna do, if you haven't yet, is create a new sound bank. Uh, so we can go to the sound banks panel here, double click on the main, and you'll see it, it drops down a bunch of events. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna make sure that, um, I've actually got one here already, so let me just remove this, and then we can create uh, and remove it from here as well, just to give you guys a more accurate representation of what you gotta do. So here um, we've created the playlist we created the music segment now what we want to do is we want to right click on this and say new event play and then let's call this bgm and then over here in the events menu you'll see it's created a new event called bgm so the event is what the kind of game engine calls and tells wise what 
uh, sort of audio files need to play at what times. And the sound bank is kind of like all of the files within WISE contained in a single thing that gets kind of fed to uh, Unity or whatever your game engine is. So if we double click on this over here, we'll want to go to the events menu and just drag the BGM into our sound bank, which we can then uh, feed to Unity. So how we do that is we go view, editors, sound bank manager, and then we go generate all. And what this does is it basically contains everything within a sound bank, which we can easily load up in our game engine. And then finally, we want to save the project. Cool. Let's see how this loads up. Perfect. Okay, so just a quick one for those who are wondering how the sound is actually being modulated within the script. I've got a kind of like score thing here. I've got a script that's basically determining the score. And here you'll see this line over here. Um, over here. <clears throat> so basically what i'm doing is i've got a threat level that is being determined by the amount of travel that the player does within the session so the higher he moves up the bigger the threat level gets and then i'm converting that threat level to a float parameter called my rtpc and then i'm feeding that my rtpc to the wise uh, sound engine using this parameter over here so I believe it's as easy as that. Um, you obviously have to load up your uh, elements within the game manager. So for example, um, this is my sounds, uh, AK ambient, and that's what the, the kind of like sound engine gets loaded into. Um, and then we initialize it over here. Um, I will post some resources down below in the description where you can go and actually copy paste some of that code just to make things a little bit easier for you um, in terms of like initializing the sound and exactly what to do. Um, there's various videos on the internet, but I thought it might be just interesting to, for you guys to see kind of like how it works in uh, in practice, you know, with the kind of like sounds and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, like I said, I'm thinking, I'm feeling like there's certain sounds in there that don't quite fit the overall kind of theme. But now the cool thing is like, now that it's all linked up, all that we need to do is kind of jump back into Cubase, change the sounds, render them out, re-import them into Wise, uh, create, uh, just generate the sound bank again, uh, jump into Unity and then just refresh project and should be good to go. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If there's anything in particular about this kind of thing that you want me to look into further, let me know in the comments as well. Um, you know, I'd be interested myself to kind of like dive further into this kind of thing. Um, it's... I like the whole idea of non-linear music, you know, music that can like develop, uh, you know, not how the original author had kind of determined it to be. I think that's a pretty interesting idea within music production in general. Um, so yeah, that kind of excites me. So if you want anything more about this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time. Cheers.